Hello, welcome to Midalia TV. Uh, today we are with um, Alexander Zimin. Zimin. Uh, he is um, a St. Petersburg, Russia, uh, head of Russian Society of Clinical Naturopathy and Phytotherapy. Uh, so we'll, uh, we will speak about uh, uh, naturopathy with um, Alexander. Before, thank you uh, for uh, was here in in uh, in our channel and the Congress, uh, Alexander. Thank you for your presentation, and you can start. Hello, my name is Alexander Zimin, and uh, today we're going to talk about blood circulation and uh, herbal remedies that we use uh, in Western. Um, approaches and in Eastern. Please, if you can show me the first slide of presentation. Uh, just I, I want to see this on on the screen also because i don't see. Uh, okay alexander you need to use your presentation because i can show you like before ah so i start with this okay you just need to tell me to put the next one uh, and uh, uh, the people that was uh, see us will see it okay so the first slide is uh, about Naturopathic treatment of cardiovascular disorders, overview of Eastern and Western medical herbs. So uh, the problem of cardiovascular diseases, they are very close to improvement of blood circulation. And in botanical medicine, there is loads of herbs. And in this presentation, I want to show some differences in Eastern approaches and Western <coughs> approaches. Before we a few words about our Russian society, and please, uh, the second slide with our label. Yes. Um, so um, the main objective of our society is, um, first of all, that naturopathy should be an instrument not only for naturopathic doctors, but also for other doctors in different areas of medicine, internal, functional, etc. So the second our objective is that um, our society should provide clinically proven evidence-based guidelines for doctors. And the third, we are trying to find the place of naturopathy in integrative medicine. So please, the next slide, the third slide. Uh, medical herbs for improvement of circulation. As I said earlier, Western approaches and Eastern that we currently using in Russian more frequently. Please, next slide. So uh, on this slide, I want to highlight these differences in using herbs. Uh, so it's a comparative list of uh, using medicinal herbs in Western Eastern botanical medicine. So probably you can see that in Western we use more uh, spices, ginger and garlic and nutmeg. And in Russian, it's some other herbs. Probably you uh, hear them for the first time. And uh, I want to touch upon these um, herbs and tell more about their medicinal properties. So please, the next slide. 
So I want to start with Bayberry. Uh, it's a medicinal use of Bayberry. Uh, it comprises, um, it's very astringent herb with broad spectrum of uh, properties, emetic, stimulant, tonic, and lots of other. But of course, it has very prominent improvement of uh, circulation. So the other indications are um, emetic stimulant and toning. It used internally in the treatment of diarrhea, jaundice, fever, colds, and many, many other indications. So please, the next slide, it's about ginger. Of course, it's widely known, widely used, is one of the most commonly con con um, consumed dietary supplements in the world. And here just they present all the spectrum of indications. And among this spectrum, you can see the cardiovascular diseases. So it's well known, but probably we need some more clinical data on um, indications of ginger and um, particular on dosages. Please, the next slide. So, and, uh, ginkgo biloba is also well known medical herb. Mm. The leaves stimulate the blood circulation and have a tonic effect on the brain. It's improving memory and giving an improved sense of well being. Also, it's uh, improving peripheral arterial circulation in treating hearing disorders like uh, tinnitus. Uh, of course, we all used to that ginkgo biloba is mostly um, used like uh, extracts, but it also can be used like a simple tea or tincture. So please, the next slide. It's about nutmeg. Uh, there is two varieties of nutmeg, medicinal nutmeg and culinary, what we know more about culinary, but it's not so potent from the medical point of view. So um, uh, medicinal nutmeg has a more prominent stress reducing properties. And because of this property, it helps in relaxing the blood vessels and um, by this property, it uh, helps keeping the heart functioning effectively due to stress reducing. So please, the next slide about hawthorn. It's also well known, uh, widely used. It increases blood flow to the heart muscle. It restores normal heartbeat. It reduces uh, degeneration of the blood vessels. Uh, the fruits and flowers are both have a hypertensive effect. Of course, uh, Hawthorne has a mild action. That's why uh, it used in prolonged time and it's necessary a long time for the treatment to be efficacious. And uh, as I personally know for myself that powdered forms is the most effective and tinctures and teas are less effective because it's really a hard task to extract the bioactive substances from tinctures and teas. So powdered forms is most preferable form. So please, the next slide, it's about motherwort. Uh, this is antispasmodic and sedative effects. It also promote relaxations. Um, so in fact, it uh, acts like nutmeg. And also it's used in functional conditions uh, when we have hot complaints due to autonomic imbalance. Uh, it's also a very good remedy for heart palpitations. Because of mild action, it could, it could be prescribed uh, in combination with other herbs. And uh, in Russia, we all like to uh, make these combinations uh, like motherwort plus hawthorn or motherwort plus ginger, etc. So please, the next slide about Panix Nota Ginseng. 
um, this a really um, panacea for cardiovascular diseases and for improving of uh, circulation. It's really improved blood flow through the coronary arteries. Um, it used for treatment of arteriosclerosis. It used for treatment of high blood pressure and angina. It's very interesting and, and double action of panic not a ginseng. Uh, just I want to draw your attention that in blood vessels, panics not a ginseng uh, has a blood thinning properties. Um, blood thinning, like for example, um, in Melitos officinalis, but outside the blood vessels, it stops bleeding. It's a wonderful double um, action uh, in one medicinal herbs we hear, uh, we see this outstanding fascinating properties so the next slide about garlic of course it's widely known for like a cardiovascular panacea it's really uh, reduces blood pressure it reduces um, unhealthy blood fats it, it increases and improves heart muscle and um, microcirculation but doses are really high for um, implementing the effect 12 close a day is a efficient dose for um, some prominent medical effic efficacy so as i understand it uh, it better should be used in capsule form because because of a pungency you cannot take uh, these 12 close a day so the next slide is about our Eastern approach to improving blood circulation that we uh, mostly use in Russian, in China. And as you can see, it's a little bit a subtle difference. And, avoid, and I want to show uh, our medicinal herbs that we use mostly. So the first is mush cardweed. So we use uh, these for treatment of high blood pressure. Uh, it has anti-inflammatory, astringent, diaphoretic, and diuretic effects. It may also have aphrodisiac and antidepressant effects. So wide spectrum, but uh, nonetheless, for improvement of microcirculation, it's really good medicinal herb. So please, the next slide. It will be about hawthorn, but we recently talked about hawthorn, uh, and um, it turned to be that hawthorn is um, equally used uh, in the Western approach and in Eastern. So um, it's very favored herb. Uh, the third is lesser periwinkle. Uh, medicinal herb and in Latin it's vinca minor. It's very interesting that um, we know why this herb really works because it contains the alkaloid vincamine. It is extracted, analyzed, and we know why this herb has vasodilating properties. So it's used in treatment of arteriosclerosis and for dementia due to insufficiency of blood supply to the brain. Uh, the root is antispasmodic and hypertensive. It's used to lower the blood pressure. And um, of course, it's very good to know the real reason why herb really works. So please, the next slide about astragalus membranaceous. Um, astragalus membranaceous is also well known, not only Russian also in China. Of course, it stimulates the immune system. It probably uh, is the first place of its uh, effect. It increases the production of interferon and macrophages, but the lowering uh, blood pressure properties are also on the first um, in the first line. And also, it uh, decreases blood sugar levels. The plant is often used in conjunction with other herbs, such as Antractylodes macrocephala and Lidaburiella tessiloides, where 
uh, tough uh, botanical names, but um, nonetheless, they these herbs are better to combine with other medical herbs. So the flavonoids content of Astragalus membranaceus may also contribute to its cardioprotective effects. And uh, added to these, um, this herb is able to reduce cholesterol levels. So it's like a panacea, it's a wonderful herb. So please, the next slide. Also, wule uh, panseria, it's a herb that we use mostly in our region. So parts use herb stem and root, bioactivity is sedative, anti-herpetensive, anti-arrhythmic. And we know the reason why it really acts. The chemical constituents includes iridoids and the derivatives of iridoids. So please, the next slide, it will be about Baikal skullcap. It's also wonderful here. It, uh, one of the 50 fundamental herbs in Chinese herbalism. It has anti-cholesterol, amic, antispasmodic, astringent, diuretic, nervine, mildly sedative effect. That's all that we need for improving blood circulation in one herb. So it's also used internally in the treatment of hypertension and other diseases, of course, because we know that practically all herbs have a broad spectrum, but some of them have like um, um, more effects, for example, in hypertension or in, in some other conditions. So young leaves cooked as a vegetable and the whole plant is dried and used as a tea substitute. So we can just use it in um, simple teas. So it's non-toxic and very effective. So please, the next slide. Um, melilot, Melilotus officinalis. Uh, two kinds of these herbs are well known in our region, white and yellow, but um, it's really the yellow that is very important. So it used in prevention of thrombosis in post-infection period. It treats varicose veins and hemorrhoids. It, uh, of course, requires a long-term treatment for the effect to be realized. Uh, we know also the reason why it's so effective, because it contains coumarins, and as the plant dries or spoils, this become converted to decumarol, a powerful anticoagulant, um, really nice and well-known and well-studied action. So, of course, that's uh, not the only herbs that I have presented here. And in the next slide, conclusions, I want to show some, uh, some results of this paper. And uh, firstly, I want to say that medical plants present a plethora of options for supporting circulation of blood, for improving this circulation. And of course, it should be combined with uh, conventional treatment. Of course, more clinical data is needed to support herbal effectiveness because all other people that say that your um, that naturopathic medicine is not effective, they say every time they say that, that you have uh, only a handful of clinical data, please give us real, um, good clinical uh effective data that's why we should combine our efforts and collect this clinical data and uh distribute this information through other medical doctors and the third that we should uh, do the harmonization of approaches to herbal product prescriptions uh, so we should combine of course western and eastern approaches we should elucidate what herbs are really effective among uh, all the herbs that I just told in this presentation. So that's all for this um, short overview of Western and uh, Eastern medical herbs. And I want to thank you 
for possibility to deliver this paper to you and also thank you for possibility to present our Russian Scientific Society on Clinical Naturopathy and Phytotherapy. Uh, I wish that um, uh, this meeting in Lisbon would be very productive and uh, have a nice day and thank you so much. Thank you very much, That's Alexander. <laughs> Thank you. For um, my presentation. Do you have something more to tell oh, so. our public? Something with sound. <laughs> you don't hear me. Probably I don't hear. Hello? Oh, 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 oh. I ask you if you want to say something more, our public. Oh. Hello? I think Alexander can can to hear us. Can you hear me? Hello? So we say goodbye. Thank you, Alexander Zimin, for your presentation. Thank you very much to accept our invitation. So um, in the next uh, time, uh, I think our invitation can... Hello? Uh, I have you a can hear me. With hearing. <laughs> so we can we sound. can say goodbye to Alexander. Oh. Thank you very much uh, to see us. It's really okay. I don't hear. Probably um, we should have connection through.